Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. And you wonder maybe, Post Hole Digger, why do you need that? Well, reality is that a lot of the foundation that we build our society on is not what it is. We were told that we have high quality and we find out the more we dig that the foundation is not built on a proper solid foundation and therefore we have to continue to dig for the prodigal son and daughter that they will have a good solid foundation to build their lives on. Let's check it out and see what we have today. Because the reality is that stages of the internal cycles of restorative justice, number 39, an oxymoron exposed. Folks, it sounds contradictory because it is. And therefore, I like to continue. Let's check it out. What I share with you has been shared over about 250 videos. When I wrote my book the first time, and that was after seven years, it took me seven years to write the book, Deceptive Protocol Blueprint for the Prodigal Son and Daughter. It got published last year in November 2019 on Amazon. And as I was working on it, I realized that I had to simplify it when I wanted to, to do it in the form of a video, because that was the next question from the publishers. And so gradually I started to figure out what social media was because I'd never used it before. I'd never made videos before, but I realized that it is so important as the living scriptures, a Christian doctrinal dilemma. We wonder what are those dilemmas and are the living scriptures the dilemma? We break it down for those uncomfortable word, with the word doctrinal. It is a body of principles of values presented to be accepted as a belief. The word doctrine comes from the Greek word didachi. Didachi is teaching. In declaration is a belief or a system of belief accepted as authoritative. In other words, those are the rules and everyone goes by them. The content of teaching intended to be accepted and believed as the truth. Now, most religions consider certain doctrines essential to the belief system. And these central or critical doctrines form the principal or the primary basis for their belief system. Denial of one or more of these essential truths would compromise their religion. Now, they call it truth or doctrines. And someone who denies one or more central doctrines would not be accepted as a genuine follower of that faith. So when I share with you that I personally experienced this, I was born in 1950 and when I was six years old in 1956, my mom passed away. I got uh, the first test of what we were made of because my dad was not a Roman Catholic. So mom could not be um, the she could not be buried into holy grounds. Yes, folks, this is sad. And so over a period of my lifetime, right now I'm 70. So in the first couple of decades, I got excommunicated from three different religions. And one even did it twice just to make sure I was not coming back. And the fun part is, the first time I got shocked, the second time I wonder what in the world are they talking about, and the third time it really hurt, because those were people that I believed in, we worked together. But as you come to reality, things that hurt is sometimes just what makes you strong and that sets you apart. 
I don't want to shock you, but I want you to realize that when you drift away from their belief system, and when I say they're from the group, then they get insecure. They don't like it, so they threaten. And by threatening you, they think they control you. And as long as you understand that, remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. So the question that we have is why would someone be put outside of a church because one gets concerned when you don't believe exactly the same they believe. So if you let it simmer too long in time it will boil over. Snuffing out your pilot light. In other words if I compare it to a heater and you let it go and simmer and, and you don't question it and don't ask something is about to happen. So the central doctrines of the Christian faith are those doctrines that make the Christian faith Christian and nothing else. In other words, they say this is it and that is it. So my question is, did the Trojan horse capture the true followers of Yeshua HaMashiach? Because that was the true name of Jesus. So as Barakela, PhD, I do my small part in carrying out the Great Commission, teaching them to observe all things the Lord commanded us. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Be imitators of Elohim. Elohim. Elohim is our Father. So what are those morals, ethics and values of the Christian faith? Now certain Christian doctrines constitute the core of the faith. So central principles include the Trinity, the deity of Christ, the bodily resurrection, the atoning work of Christ on the cross, and salvation by grace without faith. Uh-oh, that's not right. Salvation by grace through faith. These doctrines so comprise the Christian faith as essence that to remove any of them is to make the belief system non-Christian. So if you take out any of the three, that it means the Roman Catholics, the core values are accepted by the Protestants. So the basic belief of Christianity, we'll break it down and we'll come to the point where is what. So they summarize the core Christian beliefs in the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what do Christians believe? This question is no simple matter. Christianity encompasses a wide range of denominations and faith groups. Thus, within the group are the broad umbrella of Christianity as a religion. Christian beliefs vary widely as each denomination subscribes to its own set of doctrines and practices. Now, we have the Evangelical Dictionary that says of Biblical theology, their explanation of a doctrine says, the doctrine taught is a principle or greed of principles presented for acceptance or belief, a belief system. In scripture, philosophy takes on a broader meaning. Christianity is a religion conviction founded on a message of good news rooted in the significance of the light of Jesus Christ. Well, you might have heard about Christian creeds, C-R-E-E-D-S. The three major Christian creeds, the Apostle Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Antonician Creed. Together they constitute a comprehensive summary of traditional Christian doctrine. 
expressing the fundamental beliefs of a wide range of Christian churches, because these central doctrines define the character of Christianity. One cannot be saved and deny those. So if you do not agree with the Christian Greed, the Apostles Creed or the Nicene Creed, you won't fit the church. All Christian denominations, whether Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox or Protestant, agree on the essential core. The relative minor disagreements between genuinely Christian denominations cannot argue there is no objectively recognized core of fundamental doctrine that constitutes the Christian faith. So what does the Christian or modern church know about the actual teachings of Jesua? Jesua also known by many as Jesus. And what he taught was to follow the way, the truth and the light. Well, as the prodigal son or daughter, do you have your home in this far country, aka the outer darkness? In other words, what I am describing in my book and over the videos is I found and I discovered I was a prodigal son and I was living in the far country in outer darkness. Suppose you are following the footsteps of Jesus. That means Yeshua HaMashiach, he taught the way. And then at an undeniable time, there you will overpower the spiritual amnesia because you will start to remember how it was to be with the Father. Now, how do we know that? We got the Ten Commandments. Wow, that was exciting except nobody was excited because the covenant was for the children of light. See, there was some Thing that most people don't realize. They know the Ten Commandments and the Lord called Moses out of the mountain and he said, Moses, come over here, for I would give thee the law for thy people, which shall be a covenant for the children of light. Ooh, what are the children of light? Who are they? Because as far as I understand, since we live in an exceptional time right now, we have the Christians making a pact with our friend Trump, a man that is beholden by himself, so full of himself that you can see the spots in his pants. So let's just simplify it. The terms as we know, the changes you can see when someone goes to a doctor. So if we go to a doctor, and he hears about the disease and during the pandemic it is a terrible thing but a lot of people don't even get a chance to go to the uh, hospital because of what is going on. The symptoms when we go normally to a doctor on the normal circumstances they have certain stages of the disease and they can say well it's stage one, it's stage two, stage three and then they know this last stage is coming up very soon. So the symptoms can tell us what the stages are for that moment. Or like a farmer, I used to have a farm in Canada, 48 acres, and I tell you the first time I got stuck in the mud with my tractor, I didn't know how to get out because I was not used driving a tractor. I used to drive a Mercedes or another type of car. And so the beauty of it is once you become a farmer, you start recognizing by the pattern of the season, which season it is. You know when autumn is coming because the leaves are changing. You know when winter is coming, you know when spring is coming, and you know when summer is coming. 
And of course, we can feel it. We can recognize it. But as a farmer, there is something that you learn, and that's so exciting. But diseases and different conditions warrant different actions to address as they produce a diverse range of probabilities that those actions can take. For example, uh, an old, unhealthy set of circumstances makes a range of possibilities and warrants various activities than a young, healthy person. In other words, if you are 12 or 15 years of age and you fall sick due to something, you will bounce back faster than somebody from 30, 40 or 50 years old. But if you're 80, you are in deep trouble because your responsibility to bouncing back is a lot less. So when the sickness hit the followers of the way, now what am I referring to? When Yeshua HaMashiach, which was the name of Jesus, everyone else knows him as Jesus. Anyone that's a Christian knows who is Jesus. But his real name was different. Now we're talking about the sickness hitting the followers of the way, the truth and the light. As the general population considers themselves believers compared to those who do not profess or confess, I wonder how honest this assessment is. Non-believers convinced that they do not believe are more honest than the Christians that believe that Jesus is the Christ and they are the followers. Yet a believer brought up in the church manners like their parents and the grandparents is mistaken when they lay down the different layers of the stories made up to feel good. Christmas and Easter are just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, folks, we will be talking, and I have talked about it over different videos, the meaning of Easter and Christmas. It's not a victimless advantage. The problem that you have as a Christian doctrine is actually manifold. So let's break it down. Because of social media is available to the masses, one suspects that the truth should travel very fast. Now my question is simple. Can one easily sway to change once the conviction sets in over a decade of brainwashing? Now in my situation, I was in court for 18 years. I was fortunate enough to say no to a friend of mine. We did business for over 10 years. And he was a multimillionaire, lived in a big house, 15,000 square foot home, etc., etc. The house was big on the top of a hill, beautiful, overlooking London, Ontario, and Canada. And yes, we came and met on a regular basis. And when I shared with him some of the stuff, I, he actually asked me what I was involved in because it hurt rumors. He realized that what I had was substantial. And when my business changed, it started generating millions of dollars. We sat on a package worth $5 billion in collateral. My friend wanted half of that. And for that, he was going to do certain things, supposedly advantageous to me. But in my spirit, I didn't feel comfortable, so I declined the offer. And when I walked out of that door, that big house of his, he told me, he said, you will regret this. Because if you walk out of the door and do not accept what I share with you, you will see how much power I have. And I will show you. And to his behold, I lost everything. $10 million worth of, not worth, $10 million cash in defense to lawyers. Defense in all kinds of stuff. First, it was thrown out of court once or twice. Then they moved it to another court. Then they found something else. Then I ended up for 12 years defending ourselves, my wife and I. And in the process, this slowly but surely started building up. I lost the case. And I ended up being sentenced for six years, times three. And my wife, three years. But what happened was in the process, my eyes opened for something that I had never understood because I won on appeal and so we left victorious in a way and stripped of everything else but in the process my eyes open up that the truth is that the Ten Commandments was set up for somebody else the commandments were for the children of light and the Ten Commandments are for the children 
that do not understand the light. So if you are not walking in the light, you are walking in the darkness. So if you cannot follow the Ten Commandments, what happens? Automatically, the Ten Commandments becomes a debt. If you swear, it is indebted to Satan. If you lie, if you cheat, if you kill, you, could be, you become indebted to Satan. And as that slowly started to sink in, I realized that like a disease, there are different conditions. And you have to realize what is going on, folks. So let's deal with it today. So the real sickness hitting the followers of the way, the truth and the light. A non-believer, if you ask him, does he believe? He says, no, I don't. He's honest. He tells you, I don't believe. A believer or a Christian, when you ask him, he will tell you what he believes. But he does not understand what it is built on. And he is the one that is not honest. So the great and wonderful story we are discussing today is only for people that are seeking the truth. When the disciples of Jeshua walked with him for seven years, Jeshua gathered the sons of light. You see, you have to become a son of light. When you follow the way, the truth, and the light, you become a son of the light. Now, what does that have to do with Christianity? Nothing! Because Christianity is a pagan Christianity. Yes, folks. We shared and talked about this before, but in 325 AD, when the Emperor of Rome got into his mind that he wanted a final decision, now or never. And so Christianity basically was not born. Christianity was already in existence 134 years before Jesus was born. So Christianity had nothing to do with Jesus or Jeshua HaMessiah. Reality is, you can go back over some of the other videos to figure that one out. But the light, the sons of light, are the followers of Jeshua HaMessiah. Because they are following the way, the truth and the light. And so when we become the sons of light, and that means women, children, as well as men. So we're talking mankind or humanity. You look with it, not with the eyes of what you can see, but with your spiritual eye. You can see the tree of life as a source at, on running streams. You know, a running stream, that means there is water that is flowing and it's living. It is a spring that waters the land. And so the eternal garden of wonders, that is basically the center of the tree of life mysteries that we do not understand and so as the son of God the son of light Jesua HaMessiah he said hear me sons of light for I will impart to you the gift of tongues oh you guys are speaking in tongues no I'm not talking about it you start to learn to talk with God Almighty and the gift of tongues is something different Folks, when I was in the Jesus movement, that was in 1967 to 1971, we did what we were told. We prayed with the sick and we were told to lay hands on the sick. And I've seen some phenomenal scenes. People that get healed. People that just were sick and unsick. People that were dying. It was unbelievable. We had tremendous people. Robert Schambach, uh, John Maasbach, T.L. Osborne, and yes, John Hakey, books from him, Kenneth Copeland, and many, many, many of the men of God that I at that time admired because they were men of God. And so when the early 1970s passed and I uh, went actually all around the world, I discovered something going from North America, Europe, Central America, Asia, etc., etc. It was phenomenal. Each time when I prayed with people, I have seen people change. But what I really noticed when I was in jail and I was dressed like an inmate, for I was an inmate, I was sentenced. I saw the same power of God. And when I prayed with men that wanted to commit suicide because they were so ashamed of being in prison or whatever they had done, 
that the Lord changed their lives. And that is what opened my eyes to be praying with people. It's awesome. But as a broken man, I was totally stripped of everything that I had said no to Freemasons meant a lot more than just losing the $10 million and $5 billion worth of collateral. My wife and I represented ourselves and as we got stripped by the judge from everything, my eyes opened. And you know, losing everything was not fun. Reality is it affected my kids very much because the funds for their university uh, studies etc etc were all thrown in to defend ourselves but you know when i started to recognize and see the narrow way called the way the truth and the light it still took several years for me dealing with ptsd because i was told that those things will happen and i never believed it but the shock of losing everything and then gradually coming back up Yes, I was very proud of our 10,000 square foot office, our 48 acres of car farm, our cars, the flying private planes and helicopters. And I tell you, now I'm walking, I'm using a bicycle, I'm using a tram. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. Because as I came to understand, I recognized that I was no longer a slave of darkness as a Christian. Because if you do what Satan says, and now you say, what are you talking about? See, now I know I'm called a son of light and not a son of darkness. In 325 AD, Satan got the pagans connected with the believers. And at that time, they were called the first century believers, the followers of the way, the truth and the light. And if you did not declare yourself to be a Christian, you were thrown in the arena and killed by the lions or tigers or by the soldiers. And so many people just say, okay, I'm a Christian. And they became Christians from the Roman Empire, the Roman Catholic Church. Well, in 1517, Martin Luther, he was upset about certain things that were going on. And he proclaimed and he stood up against the Pope and he was told that was none of his business. And so we get the Reformation, we get the Protestants, but in reality you're doing exactly the same. You're celebrating the pagan Christianity because it has nothing to do with what the Lord said. He calls for the children of light, the sons of light. And if you follow the way, the truth and the light, now you can become a son of light because you will learn to follow on the way God will teach you what it is to be a son of light and no longer walk in the darkness. Folks, I did this maybe quick because I don't want to insult you, but I want you to wake up. What you're celebrating as the holiday uh, season, Christmas season and what have you, Folks, you are walking in darkness. And as a son of light, the commandments of God are light in comparison. Please, think about it. Open your eyes. And remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.